Hi, welcome to this Hangout. And in this Hangout, we're going to talk about the 48 Laws of Power, which was a book that is uh, that was written by Robert Greene back in 2000. And I had the opportunity to read it in 2005, and it really helped me in a lot of areas of my life. But in this particular session, I'm going to talk about how it has helped me in my business. And the format that we're going to do is I'm just going to go uh, by down each law, and I'm going to share with you my perspective on why I feel that law and how that law helps as far as your business goes. So hopefully you get some uh, notes out of this and apply it to your your own business. It's a, it's a great book and it's one of those books where you can't take it verbatim. You can't take it exactly what he says. You gotta, you gotta take it with a grain of salt and you gotta also take the information contained within this book and apply it to your own specific specific area of application and more importantly, you got to do it with absolute ethics because this book is raw, uncut, it's straight to the point. And if you take this stuff and you don't know what you're doing, it can cause a lot of damage in the lives of others and yourself. So please make sure that you really evaluate your decisions, your actions that you take as a result of reading this book. It's a very, very powerful book. It's changed a lot of lives. It's made a lot of lives better. And I'm pretty sure that it probably um, caused some people to uh, validate some of their negative thoughts also. So powerful book. What we're interested in doing is talking about how we can take the 48 Laws of Power and apply it to our business. And I'm going to share with you my own perspective on it and how I do it. So this is, a, this is a free recorded, uh, when I say free recorded, I'm talking about I didn't review anything. I just am sitting down here to record this video and I'm just going at it like that because uh, there's no notes. I'm just going to free flow it like with all my hangouts, which is actually my second hangout right now. And uh, the, the reason why I'm doing that is because A, it saves a lot of time and B, because you get the uncut, raw, real information, the way it comes out of me, the way I uh, interpret it, and I'm not leaving, holding anything back here. And uh, I think you're going to find that really useful. So, law number one, never outshine the master. So what this means is that it's important to let people have the spotlight. Sometimes people want to have that spotlight they feel they need that spotlight for the validation purposes and if they're your client let them have that spotlight because you're interested in working deals you're interested in growing your business not uh, one-upping them or uh, ha bo boosting your ego so if you outshine somebody they might build resentment towards you and then they won't deal with you again so keep that in consideration law number two Never put too much trust in friends. Learn how to use enemies. So this is important because friends, if you hire friends, if you work with friends, they might feel a sense of entitlement and they want to sometimes, not always, be treated a different way. And your coworkers or their coworkers or the, the others that are working with them might, un, might see you prioritizing them or giving them special treatments and that's going to build resentment towards you and that's not going to help you. Law number three, conceal your intentions. This is all about being as clear and concise and to the point as possible. You don't have to reveal everything and people love to pry information out of you but stick to the point. Consider where you're taking the interaction so if it's in sales you want to make the sale and only say what's necessary to move you towards that sale. Everything else is not relevant, it's not important. Law number four, always say less than necessary. The, the the power is in action, not talking about it. So when it comes to sales, it's important that you you, you perform what what I call action oriented sales, getting people to agree upon and eventually lead to a lead into making the sales. You leading them down the road towards making the sale, and only saying what's necessary to get them there, and not you know going off on tangents or ranting about other things that are not important. Law number five, so much depends on reputation. Guard it with your life. Now, your reputation is probably one of the most important things that you could have in your business. So guard it. Always treat people with respect. Always do the right thing. And if for some reason someone's out to get you and they don't like you for whatever reason, then the you know they're gonna the whole world is gonna see you a certain way. And if they see you in a in a way that they consider you evil, or whatever, no one's gonna validate what they're saying, right? They'll just 
it's just uh, it's really important if you build a reputation and don't burn any bridges and treat everyone with respect uh, that y that you do that because if you don't do that then you never know who one day is going to come back and know somebody that you're dealing with and essentially talk to that person and you won't get that deal so treat everyone with respect court attention at all cost so don't be the person that is kind of at the back of the room that blends in and has nothing to say nothing to offer be the person that stands out and I'm not talking about in an egotistical way I'm talking about in a way that is going to get people to connect with you that is going to want to do business with you so have something unique that you want to offer and people are going to want to reach out for you you're going to stand out law number seven get others to do the work but take all the credit so what this means is that you put yourself in a position that you have a really good team and deliver on the work as amazing as you can so that your client gives you all the credit now at the same time and I'm talking about the credit as far as payment and wanting to do more business with you and at the same time you respect the people that help you get there you treat them well also law number eight make other people come to you use bait if necessary so marketing very important marketing is all about getting people to pay attention to you and sales is all about getting those people who have paid attention to you to take the next step so this is about marketing here right so get people to know who you are make YouTube videos this is how I do it I put myself out there in many different shapes and forms and people contacted me and people contact me and that's how I get deals law number nine win through your actions never through argument never argue with people it's not worth it it's just gonna end up in the other person feeling resentful towards you now you're gonna meet people that can take constructive criticism and you can have a conversation that might seem like an argument but really it's a, dis a discussion to get to the next point and if you know that person is not the kind of person that will build resentment towards you which are you know really amazing people if you can find people like that I got some of them uh, people like that in my life then you can have a discussion with them that's not an argument but for the most part just do things don't argue and don't convince or don't uh, fall into somebody else's way of doing things who's trying to get you to do things a certain way do your own thing and don't listen to what others have to say and argue with them uh, law number 10 infection avoid the unhappy and the unlucky usually what happens is people who are negative who are uh, unlucky and unhappy are, are bringing all, a lot of that stuff onto themselves and if you associate with them they're going to convince you that their way is the way of doing things and it's going to mess you up so surround yourself with people who are positive and uplifting and that are moving you forward towards your goals and that people and, and these are people that support you law number 11 learn to keep people dependent on you if you create really good products or services and you're the only one out there that could offer that level of customer support or that product or service then people are in a sense uh, dependent on you and they're gonna keep coming back to you so that's very important if you differentiate yourself you're just like everybody else then you can be easily replaced if you're unique then people are going to move towards your uniqueness law number 12 use selective honesty and generosity to disarm your victim so this is one of those things about being clear and concise be honest be generous but don't be overly honest and overly generous in the sense where you're just talking and trying to convince them that you're an honest person uh, win through your actions is, an, is very closely related to this uh, be be generous but don't uh, you know be a don't be a pushover know when to draw the line know when people are taking advantage of you and uh, just do enough so that you can build a good relationship with them and then move forward as you continue your dealing with them in business law number 13 when asking for help appeal to people's self-interest so when asking for help if somebody's asking for money in return don't try to give them something else or convince them that you can offer them these other things because they're not going to be happy now some people like recognition some people like uh, you know dealing with you in business for other reasons find out what it is that they're interested in dealing with you the reason why they're interested in dealing with you and offer them and fulfill that need law number 14 pose as a friend work as a spy so pay attention to what people are saying really uh, listen to what people are saying because people give you a lot of information if you just listen and you can take that and you can use it to create products or services that you could sell to them or others 
And uh, that's essentially what this is all about. It's not as direct as it sounds, right? So uh, pose as a friend, work as a spy, it kind of sounds a little shady, but it's not. It means, you know, be a friend to the person and really dig and find out what their pains and frustrations are so you can create products and services around it. Law number 15, crush your enemy totally. The way I interpret this is if you've got some people that are negative and they want to bring you down for whatever reason, they do exist. I've come across people like that who are, I don't know, for whatever reason, they're just angry and frustrated and they want to bring you down and they can't stand to see you successful, just ignore them. You know, it's if, if you could just stay outside of their awareness and just away from them in general, they have no effect on you. It's very important. Law number 16, use absence to increase respect and honor. Uh, very simply put, what is rare we value more than what is abundant. So for example, gold has a higher value than uh, sand on a beach, right? People will pay more for gold. So therefore, you've got to present yourself in a way where you value your time and don't just you know, give your power away, just give yourself up too freely and just be the kind of everything to everyone type person. Find a select group of clients, uh, select a focus, things that you're working on, put all your attention there to the point where you're really busy so that people, when they, when they get some of your time, they really value it because they know that you're a person that really concentrates their time and energy on things that are worthwhile and they're going to feel valued also. Law number 17, keep others in suspended terror, cultivate an air of unpredictability. So what this means is that you are people, are, people don't know what you're up to, right? So always change and try different things out and uh, be exciting, be an exciting person because people are excited or drawn towards people that they don't know what they're going to say next, just exciting, spontaneous people. Be exciting and spontaneous, that's what it's about. So how can you be exciting and spontaneous in your business? Come up with new ideas, uh, come up with creative ways of doing things. Uh, present some information, some unique information to the person from a perspective that, to your client, in a way that they have never uh, received information in that format. You know, be unpredictable and uh, sometimes just show up on your client's site and uh, you know, start talking with them and finding out what they need help with and you know, create that excitement. Many different ways of doing that. Law number 18, do not build f uh, fortresses to protect yourself. Isolation is dangerous. So if you are running a virtual business like I am and you are constantly at home working, sometimes you know, a week can go by and I don't go outside, I just do everything. I, I work out in the gym downstairs and whatever and I'm so zoned in in what I'm doing. And if I continue doing that for like months on end, uh, and then I happen to step outside, and you know Armageddon's happening, you know that's extreme, but let's just say there was a, uh, you know, a, a storm, a hurricane, or something going on, and I didn't have access to that information, that could potentially uh, mess me up. And so in business, you always want to keep an idea, keep an, uh, an eye out of what's happening in the marketplace. Uh, what are what are the trends? What are people interested in? Uh, so you can design your products and services accordingly because if you're too focused on what you're doing you might miss some opportunities that are presented your way. Law number 19, know who you're dealing with, know who you're dealing with and do not offend the wrong person. So when and if possible don't offend anyone. Try to be good to everyone, try to be nice to everyone. I've seen a lot, uh, some people who uh, you know kind of uh, have mistreated me in the past and have treated other people around me a lot better and I remember that, and you know, uh, that makes me not want to deal with them. And as a result, I'm going to uh, prioritize others that have always treated me with respect. And you know, likewise, everyone else feels the same way. So always treat people with respect, and you know, don't belittle anyone. Always, always give them what they want if you can. If you can't, you know, don't treat them bad, because you never know who you're dealing with. Number 20, do not commit to anyone. This is important because uh, too many commitments will keep you locked up in a routine that you can't get out of and you might offend some people because remember when you're committing to someone, uh, they're essentially revamping their schedule so they could uh, you know, work with you and if you break that commitment, they're going to have resentment towards you. So try not to commit and if you do commit, make sure you, you meet your commitments uh, eye to eye and on time and whatnot. And uh, because the world of business uh, changes, the markets change all the time, if you commit uh, in, a, let's say, a business deal with someone and that person 
it wants to stay in it and it's a sinking ship for some reason and you jump out of it <laughs> because you know it's a sinking ship, they're going to have resentment towards you. So know who to commit with and who not to commit with. That's another important aspect. Law number 21, play a sucker to catch a sucker, seem dumber than, you, than your mark. So if you come off as being really sharp and really smart, uh, people are going to have like resentment towards you. That's just how it is. It's just, it's just weird like that. It's not always the case, right? So, but if you come off as being humble, because that's what this is talking about, then people are going to be more open. They're going to tell you more things, going to reveal more things which you could use to your advantage. So always be humble. Number 22, use the surrender tactic. Transform weakness into power. So know when to draw the line. If somebody who you know is arguing their point, they absolutely believe in the delusional reality that they live in or some aspect of business or whatever, just say, you know what, you're right. You're, you're, you're right. And you know what, maybe they are right. Maybe you don't know what you're talking about and they know what they're talking about. That's why they're defending their point. But just get away from that argument, right? Just surrender to it, right? And uh, that can put you in a powerful position because then what? They'll, what they'll do is they'll more likely listen to you because you've accepted their uh, reality or you can just not work with them and move on to working with somebody else. Law number 23, concentrate your forces. So this is really important. Uh, have a very clear plan what you got to do in your business, all the steps that you got to take to get there and focus your attention on it without being distracted. A lot of people uh, you know, when you the more successful you get, the more you move up in the world of business, the more people want to take your attention and try to get you to pay attention to something else that might may not be worth your time. And you know, they can feel very passionate about you taking this thing that uh, this step that they want you to take because they think that you're going to get the results, but you know better that you have a different uh, objective and you don't want to go down that path. So by concentrating and you know, staying disciplined and focused and just telling them, in a nice way, again, you don't want to offend people, that you're not interested in doing this right now. Maybe you'll look into it later and focus your attention on what matters. You're going to make uh, more progress. Law number 24, uh, four, play the perfect courtier. So a courtier is somebody that can connect with one group of people, and then if this group of people that's over here doesn't connect with this group of people, they can still go to this group and, and uh, connect with them. They're a uh, kind of person that can blend in with absolutely everyone. And this is important because different markets, different businesses, different dealings requires you to uh, see things from other different, multiple different perspectives, and being able to connect with those people in different groups can help create more business for you, more opportunities, will allow you to do a lot of different things in business. So just get along with different people. Learn how to blend in to different groups of uh, people. Law number 25, recreate yourself. This is really important because every time you recreate yourself, you gain a new perspective. So I've lived many different lifestyles. My business has evolved into different realms. I've started things. I've stopped things. I've grown into different things. I do more of certain things in business. I've always recreated my business. Constantly I'm recreating it and I'm not attached to it because then I get more perspective, more insight, and as a result, I can uh, command higher prices for my services because I bring way more to the table. Law number 26, keep your hands clean. So always be honest, always operate with integrity, always deliver what you said you're going to deliver, and if you can't deliver it for some reason, then figure out a way to uh, mitigate that situation by uh, you know, some level of understanding between the two parties. Uh, but don't uh, hurt people, don't treat people badly, and uh, you know, don't uh, del don't scam people and things like that in the world of business. Uh, you know, blatantly scam or even indirectly scam. Don't do it. And uh, you're going to have more doors open for you because people are going to remember that you're a person that op operates very clean, efficiently, and someone with integrity. Law number 27: Play on people's need to believe to create a cult-like following. So this is very important. Don't be a kind of person that is a follower. Be a leader. Be really firm, firm on what you believe in. People are going to challenge you, but if you stay true and don't argue with them, but just do your thing, you're going to have a lot of people that are going to believe in you. And the more people that believe in you, the more business you're going to get, and the more referrals you're going to get. So it's very powerful. Law number 28: interaction with boldness. So be very direct when you're communicating with people. If you're going to take action, be bold. Don't be somebody who's insecure. Uh, approach every interaction and aspect of your business with confidence because people love people who have confidence. Confident people can improvise and make things happen when opportunities don't go the way they planned because of their confidence. They can see clearly 
So interaction with boldness. Law number 29, plan all the way till the end. So instead of being a dreamer, be an action taker. Have a dream, but have a clear plan on how you got to get there and all the things you need to do each and every day till you get there and don't go off course. Stick with it all the way to the end, planning every step of the way. So in marketing, you got to track absolutely everything you do in your marketing. Don't leave it up to luck and chance. Tra track every aspect of your sales funnel. It's really important. Plan all the way till the end. Law number 30, make your accomplishments seem effortless. Okay, so your actions must seem natural and executed with ease. And I'm just going to read this here. Uh, this is actually, I'm, re I'm reading a summary of the 48 Laws of Power, and sometimes I'm going to refer back to it because it just helps me get my point across better. Uh, all the toil and practice that go into them and also all the clever tricks must be concealed. When you act, act effortless, 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 effortlessly as if you could do much more. Avoid the temptation of revealing how hard you work. It only raises questions. Teach no one your tricks or they will be used against you. So many ways that you can look at this, but the way I look at it is, uh, you know, be graceful when you're executing. Let people know that you're comfortable, you're confident as you're executing because then they're going to have more trust in you and they're going to give you more opportunities and more deals. So even if it's hard work, be calm, be confident and execute with ease and you're going to gain more opportunities and respect from others. Law number 31, control the options. Get others to play with the cards you deal. So this goes back to being very clear and concise. If you know exactly what your objective is and all the steps that you need to do to get there, then nobody can tell you otherwise and nobody can deal you cards that you don't know how to play because essentially you have all these things that you need to do to get to your goal and in your business you're going to be hiring people or working with people or selling or doing whatever it takes to get to that goal and you're going step by step and if somebody comes in and says hey you should do it this way you can say no I don't want to do it this way this is the way we're doing do you know anyone that can help you with this like it's very straight uh, forward and it's a, it's a powerful position to be in if you know exactly what you need to do to get to where you want to go Law number 32, play to people's fantasies. So this is important because a lot of times people, uh, when you're dealing, especially in the businesses that I deal with, people want to have a lifestyle of where they see themselves living this lifestyle. And you've got to help paint that picture of where they want to be. You've got to add clarity to that picture. You've got to motivate them because that's what's going to get them to take action to deal with you because by dealing with you, they're going to inevitably have that fantasy that they want to see happen as a reality. So be very, uh, you know, paint the picture. When somebody tells you what they want, you know, uh, go in there and talk to them and be excited about what they want and then show them that you know the way that, uh, on how to get there, provided that you really do. Law number 33, discover each man's thumbscrew. So this is important uh, because the thumbscrew is essentially a weakness, right? So if you hire people, and they have weaknesses, do not give them the projects in which they're weak on unless you want to develop them because if you do that then you're putting yourself at the mercy of you know them not having the skills necessary to execute on that. So give the projects that are the strengths of certain people to those people and if they have weaknesses find other people to do those works or find, system, uh, find systems and put it in place so that that work can be delivered upon. Uh, number 34, be royal in your fashion, act like a king to be treated like one. So be very uh, calibrated. This is what I'm, that's the word I'm looking for, calibrated. So if you're going to a business meeting where everybody's dressed in a nice sharp suit and it's clean shaven and whatnot, do the same. If you're going to a business meeting where everything is laid back, uh, be laid back, okay? So be presentable and be, and don't, and don't try to, uh, you know, like when it comes to fashion, right? So be be clean, be res. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Uh, be presentable. That's essentially what it is. And presentable, being presentable is all about calibration, and that's important. How you look, and when you're dealing with someone, how you look and how you take care of yourself is a direct relation of how they feel the other person feels you're going to take care of them. It's a direct correlation. So always be presentable in the way you dress and carry yourself and be groomed 
uh, you know, take care of yourself. Right now I'm not shaven, but if I was going to teach a workshop, for example, I would wear a nice dress shirt, I would shave, make sure my haircut is properly uh, uh, put together so I appear to be a lot sharper so when I present something, there is a, a congruence. Law number 35, master the art of timing. So know when to say something, when it needs to be said, know when not to say it, know when to show up, when not to show up. Uh, have a sense of control over time. That's what this is about. So in business, it's about knowing when to say what you need to say to get the deal. When do you need to show up to do the work? When do you not show up? Never seem like you're in a hurry. Don't be the kind of person that is uh, that seems like you're, you've lost control of your reality. There, this is common with entrepreneurs. They sometimes appear to be busy, busy and all over the place and uh, that just comes off as having a lack of control and you're projecting that with your clients. And that's not something you want to do. Law number 36, disdain things you cannot have. Ignoring them is the best revenge. So essentially, if you can't have the thing, if it's unrealistic, there's no need to focus on it. Focus on what you can do. And I know in entrepreneurship, uh, part of it is being kind of unrealistic, right? Because you're going to come up with new things that other people are going to say, that's unrealistic, and you're going to go out and create it and deliver upon it. But that's not what I'm talking about right here, okay? If you are in business and someone says to you, like I had a perfect example. Somebody said, Joe, why aren't you aiming for like $50,000 a month? Because I can't see the perceived pattern to make $50,000 a month net earnings and nor do I really want to at this point I'm going to focus on making eleven dollars or $22,000 a month of net earnings because by uh, by doing that I'm going to ensure that I'm going to gain the results and yeah eventually I want to make $50,000 a month but it's not something that I'm going to put emphasis on right now because there is no clear path that I see and I know something based on my life that every time I take a clear step towards a direction, I achieve it. And every time I, I think of things that are outside of my reality, eventually they are part of my reality, but if at that moment they're outside of my reality and I don't focus on them, I make more progress by focusing on the challenging things that I, I do want to achieve. And, uh, and that's, what we, uh, that's a practical example right there for law number 36. Law number 37, create compelling spectacles. So in your marketing, in your business, in your delivery to your clients, when you're teaching workshops, like I teach workshops, I make sure that it's a spectacle. I, I make sure that my presentations are good. I make sure that I present it in a certain way that they're, they're entertained by the presentation. I use certain visuals and you know, I make it very enjoyable because life is about experiences and your clients want to feel really good experiences. And if you can create these good experiences for them, they're going to want to deal with you more and more. Law number 38, think as you like but behave like others. So, you know, we all have our views and opinions and, you know, things that we like in the world and don't like in the world and things that we're insecure about, things that we're secure about and uh, how we want to see the world uh, be. And I have uh, some people who are in the world of business that I know that see the world a certain way that the rest of the world doesn't see it and they have this kind of uh, conflicting uh, interactions with others to get people, to force them to see people, to, to see the world the, the, that they want, the way they wanted to see it, and as a result, nobody's listening to them. <laughs> so that's not good. And in the world of business, you've got to blend in with people, you've got to make people feel like you're one of them. And uh, in NLP, we call that pacing and leading. Once people feel like you're them and they can, can resonate with you, when you present an idea, they're more likely to consider it. So pacing and leading, NLP stuff. Uh, law number 39, stir up the waters to catch a fish. So you've always got to be a little uh, controversial. You always got to try weird things. You know, right now I'm doing Google Hangouts and I'm recording this live and I have one viewer right now that's watching it. I don't know who uh, this person is, but thank you very much for joining it. But I'm trying things out, right? So you got to stir up the water and try all kinds of things because you never know when you're going to get an opportunity. And as a result of, of doing things, even on YouTube back in the days, I actually got more clients. Some of the most profitable clients came from stirring up the waters. So law number 40, uh, despise the free lunch. So what this means is that whenever somebody gives you something for free, and this happens a lot in the world of business, people will take you out to dinner, they'll buy you all kinds of stuff, 
because maybe they want to work a deal with you. And I think that that's fair. You know, you don't want to live in a in a world where you feel that everybody who gives you free stuff has some weird evil alter alternative mo uh, ulterior motive. But at the same time, you got to remember that um, uh, not everything that's given to you for free is really free, right? I mean, it, it comes with an obligation of some shape or, or form. Uh, law number 41, avoid stepping into a great man's shoes. So this one resonates really well for me because when I started out my business, I had uh, been, I had certain role models and people that I admired in the world of business and I would try to model myself after them and I would almost try to be like them. And you know what, the reality is you're never going to be like anybody else. You are you and you are unique and the moment you become very confident in who you are and what you're going after and you know, you, you, you've got a clear plan to get there, you're going to, uh, it, when you start out, you're going to model after somebody but eventually you're going to become your own person and you can never step into a great man's shoes nor should you try you should just uh, strive to become a better person than you were yesterday. So in your business, don't compare your business to somebody else's business. Don't try to copy another business. Be unique. Find uh, the needs in marketplace. Uh, listen to what your customers want and you're going to create something great and uh, you're going you're gonna to move up in the ranks in the world of business. N law number 42, strike the shepherd and the sheep will scatter. So essentially this means to me, don't argue, like say you go into an organization and I'm a consultant so I'll go into an organization and a lot of the workers there will have a different view uh, on, on the, the systems that I want to put in place. What I'm interested in is speaking to the decision makers and having a conversation with them and working a deal with them because there was once the deal has been put in place they will make the the changes necessary in their organization to uh, implement this stuff and that way I'm not uh, you know trying to convince people at a different level who are not decision makers that they should buy into my reality a decision is always better made when it comes from the top down than the bottom up Law number 43, work on the hearts and minds of others. So this is all about sales and marketing, right? When you're communicating with someone, you're communicating emotionally to the person to get them excited. You're also being clear and concise. So you're satisfying the logical part of their brain. And by speaking to the hearts and the minds of the people, both, without going off on tangents and you know having weird objectives uh, outside of where the interaction is going, you're going to increase your sales and uh, people are going to feel that you really value them. Law number 44, disarm and infiltrate with the mirror effect. So this is important. This is actually kind of related to uh, law number 43, I would say, because uh, one of the most important aspects of business is dealing with people. I love dealing with people and I always want to improve my skill to become a better deal maker. And one of the best ways to secure a deal is to connect with someone in a way that they feel that you're like them. You look for the similarities and the connections between uh, you and the other person and you connect with them at a very deep level which is a mirror effect and they're more likely to take action on what you propose as a result. Law number 45, preach the need for change but never reform too much at once. So this is uh, very important because the world of business uh, sometimes nowadays capitalism has been given a bad name because uh, of greed and things like that and I'm a fan of capitalism I believe capitalism works but at the same time I don't think that it's flawless right so I do want the world of business to change and move in a direction where we're helping other people and not scamming and there's no like you know greed and things like that and I do want this to happen but I'm, ne I'm not going to consider myself part of like the Occupy Wall Street movement for example. I don't necessarily resonate with that movement. I understand what they're doing, right? So this is about uh, understanding exactly what you want to see as far as the change goes in the world but don't totally revamp yourself because somebody said you should do now things this way if you want to see this change and as a result lose yourself. Law number 46, never appear to be too perfect. It's very important to show your flaws and your imperfections because that's what makes you human and that's what makes other people connect with you. If you come off as being too perfect, you seem unapproachable, you seem as the kind of person that is intimidating and as a result there's going to be a harder time building a rapport with, with, between that person and you and you're not going to get the deal across because the deals are made during rapport. So you want to build rapport and if you appear to be too perfect, 
and you're dealing with a person that is not at that level, then it, you're going to have that disconnect there. Law number 47, do not go past the mark you aim for in victory, learning when to stop, uh, learn when to stop. So the way I interpret this is planning step by step to get to the destination of where you want to be and plan methodically, right, every step of the way. And once you get there, evaluate what you want to do next. And uh, if, you have to, if you have to draw the line there, draw the line, okay? What's the reason why you built your business in the first place? When you, get, you finally get to that goal, uh, are you going to now start chasing money, want to make even more money for no reason just because you like making money? I mean, this is how sometimes uh, we, uh, as we build our business, can probably go in the direction of greed which then will blind us and cause us to make all kinds of uh, you know, silly decisions that can mess us up. Law number 48, which is the, the last law, which I, I consider the most powerful out of all of them, and it kind of sums it all up and puts it all together, is to assume formlessness. So never attach fully to anything. Never attach these laws. These laws aren't absolute. They're dynamic. They change. They, de they change based on the markets, the, the situation. Like the, the, the world is always changing, and you should not attach yourself to any idea, belief system, identity, or style of business or way of doing things. My business has evolved over the last uh, five years since I started many different shapes and forms, and I'm not attached to how my business is now. It could change. I could attach. I'm not attached to the industry that I'm in. If I see a high level of profitability in the restaurant industry, I would jump into that, right? I mean, I'm not attached to things. I'm interested in considerably growing my net worth and my business, my level of understanding of business uh, consistently throughout the years, and sometimes that might mean uh, shifting into different marketplaces and things like that. So don't be too attached. Be formlessness. Be like water, you know? Uh, understand what's happening with the economy, with the markets, and, uh, and adjust your business model accordingly. I mean, a perfect example is I had a friend, and uh, during the, the recession of 2009, her business was selling high-end merchandise, and I told her, I said, listen, uh, nobody's buying this stuff now. What you need to do is you need to move into a more uh, discounted model. And she didn't want to do that, and as a result, her business was uh, suffering. And businesses that did move into the discounted model, and during that time of the recession, people were buying a lot of of these discounted uh, clothing items, uh, they would they would do well. So there you go. So there it is, the 48 Laws of Power. I hope you enjoyed this uh, video, this Google Hangout here. Uh, I use the 48 Laws of Power to help me in the world of business. The 48 Laws of Power are not diabolic and evil as they seem to be when you read it, if you read it from a perspective of being a victim and you can't read between the lines and take the good out of it and apply it to what you want to do. It's a really powerful book. It's a really, it's a great book. One of the best books that I've uh, I've ever read, and it's a book that's helped me a lot in my business. So I hope you got some good information from this. Thank you very much for joining me. Thank you very much for uh, taking the time to uh, watch this video. I've got more of these coming up. If you have any questions, let me know, and uh, I will talk to you soon. Take care.